Hey folks, Guillaume here. I'm excited to announce the Java ADK. Yes, our agent development kit is now available for Java developers. And in this video, we're going to learn all about what it is, how it works, and how you can get started. As you might know, building AI agents from scratch, dealing directly with low-level LLM APIs or SDKs can quickly become complex. You're managing states, tool calls, control flows, and more, often reinventing the wheel for common patterns. That's precisely what the Agent Development Kit, or ADK, is designed to address. ADK is a flexible and modular open source framework specifically built to simplify the development and deployment of AI agents. We already have an introductory video about ADK and also a set of workshops that go through samples and examples of how to use it. Please check the description for links to these videos. So having said that, in this video, I would like you to focus on the Java ADK. First, we'll see how you can get started and run your first Java agent in about five minutes or so. And then we'll dive deeper into some of the more advanced concepts. First step, as with any library, is including ADK in your project. When using Java, this means adding the necessary dependency to your build file. Whether you prefer Maven or Gradle, that's up to you. ADK also has a nice dev UI to help you prototype and debug your agents with a cool chat interface. So if you want to use it, you can also add this extra dependency, dash dev, on this web UI development console. Once you have the dependency, the most fundamental concept you'll work with is the notion of agents. There are three main categories of agents. LLM-based agents use LLM for reasoning, deciding which tools to call or which agents to transfer to. There are workflow agents for more prescriptive or deterministic logic flows. And also custom agents where you can code your own way with your own logic. And of course, you can compose them all together for more advanced scenarios. How would you define an LLM agent? Here's a simple example to create a helpful assistant to let kids and teenagers ask questions about scientific concepts. You invoke the agent builder, you give your agent a name, a description, the LLM model you want to use, and also some instructions illustrating the role of the agent. You can put that definition in your class main method. Okay, this is very declarative, but how do you actually run the agent? We've got a dev UI if you want to prototype and debug your agents with a visual web console, but I'll quickly show you how to set up some code to run your agent programmatically and execute your agents from the command line. Here, we are still in the main method of your Java class. To run the agent, we'll use an in-memory runner, create a session to hold the conversation. Then, in a big while loop, we'll take the questions from the user from the standard input, and they can quit by typing quit whenever they want to end the conversation. Then we craft a content object with the question coming from the user's input. We execute the agent via the runner's run async method. Finally, we loop over all the asynchronous events forming the response from the agent. And we've got a familiar chatbot loop interaction. Now to run this from Maven, this is the command line you'll have to launch to see the question answer flowing. Let's see everything in action inside Visual Studio Code. I have my Java project set up. I have a pom.xml file with the dependencies on the Google ADK framework already defined. I have my science teacher agent, which is right there with its uh, definition, with the uh, while loop to go through the input from the command line. And let's run this. I'm going to say hello, and then I'm going to say, um, what about quantum computing? Let's see what it says. Okay, it's a long answer. It's complicated quantum, right? Okay, interesting. I can then quit. And what about seeing this in the dev UI? So I have another command here run the dev UI in the directory where all my sources, my agents are defined. I open the web UI and you can see that, oh, I have a few agents already defined. Let's go with the science app agent. I'm gonna say hello again. 
And I can enable token streaming if I want to see the response being streamed as it's being generated. Why is the sky blue? What's interesting uh, is that it's streamed. You can see the ongoing sessions. You can see the events that are flowing through, like uh, the first one was, hey, hello, and then the classic question. And when you click on it, you can see the events from the ADK, as well as the requests that are sent and received from the LLM. So far, so good. Are you ready to dive a little deeper? All right. We created your first agent in Java and saw how to run it. However, the agent lives on its own island. It's time you give it some wings and let it interact with the external world via tools. Think about it. A large language model is incredibly powerful with text and, or multimedia elements, but it can't natively browse the internet, query your database, send an email, or call an external API. Tools are the way agents bridge that gap. Tools are supported by a capability of LLMs called function calling. Your agent receives a user request, the LLM analyzes it, determines if it's uh, an external action that's needed, and decides which registered tool to use along with the arguments for that tool. The ADK framework then intercepts this function call from the LLM, executes the corresponding code or action you've defined for that tool, and finally, the tool's result is sent back to the agent, usually to the LLM again, so it can process the result and formulate the final response to the user. ADK abstracts this away, providing a clean interface for defining tools and handling that entire execution loop for you. Java ADK provides three types of tools for your agents to use. Functions, tools with your own code, built-in tools like Google Search, third-party tools like the ones provided by MCP servers. So let's talk about function tools for a moment. A function tool essentially wraps a piece of your code, a method, and makes it available to the agent. Okay, so we created a science teacher agent. Now let's create a customer agent. As usual, we give it a name, an LLM model to use, a description, some instructions about its role, and the fact it should use a tool to let customers ask about the status of their orders. How to declare the existence of that tool? Via the tools method, by passing it a function tool that wraps a method on the customer order tools class. Now, let's see how to create that function. You define a Java method, which will serve as your external function that the agent needs. You annotate it with add schema annotations to document its purpose and its parameters. That helps the LLM figure out when to call that function and what parameters the function expects. Then you can return some structured response like a map, which will be serialized into a JSON object and passed back to the LLM agent. Let's have a look at this customer agent within Visual Studio Code. I define my agent here and notice the function tool create where we define that we add an extra tool to the agent. And this is defined here with this method add schema to describe the method as well as the parameters. And let's run that through the dev UI, which is already running. Now in the dev UI, let's say hello. Let's ask for the status of, what is the status of my order? ref, uh, whatever. And let's see, oh, what's interesting is that you can see that a function was called, a tool was called, and the answer was received. And you can see the various uh, events. So the initial uh, event, like the question we asked, then the tool was called, its execution came back, and then we give the answer. So you can uh, go back and forth and see what was generated uh, the request that was sent to the LLM, the response. So it's super convenient to better understand what's going on within your agent as you develop it when you want to debug it. It's critical to give precise and explicit instructions to define the agent's purpose, its persona, its goals, and to provide guidance in how it should interact with the user and the declared tools. The tools should also be described with great detail so that the LLM clearly understands its purpose and its arguments. 
By equipping an LLM agent with tools, you've got a functional agent capable of understanding natural language requests and performing actions on the external world through the tools you've defined. This forms the essential foundation for building more complex and capable agents in Java. But now let's move from single agents to the world of multi-agent systems. We can have multiple agents collaborating together in a multi-agent scenario. Java ADK supports extensibility through MCP, Model Context Protocol, and A2A, Agent-to-Agent -agent Protocol. We'll talk more about these in the other upcoming videos. But for today, let's explore multi-agent architecture and how ADK allows you to implement them. A powerful pattern ADK enables is allowing one agent to use another agent as a tool. This agent tool concept lets you build hierarchical or collaborative systems where agents delegate tasks to others. Let's say our main agent needs a tool to create summaries of long text. We can define a simple summarizer agent like this. Let's define our main agent to be a helpful assistant, and we'll also instruct this agent to use the summarizer agent we've just defined to create summaries of long text as requested by the user. The agent tool class will transform our summarizer agent into a tool that the main agent can invoke when needed. ADK's agent tool provides a clean standardized interface for this agent to agent interaction, abstracting away the underlying communication mechanisms. We've just seen how to use an agent as a tool with an LLM based agent, but for more prescriptive multi agent systems, ADK's workflow agents are essential for orchestrating complex flows involving multiple agents. There are three workflow agents, sequential, parallel, and loop agents. There's also the possibility of creating some custom logic-based agents, but we'll save that for another video. Let's zoom in on the workflow agents for a moment. I often say that if you can draw a flowchart for a part of your agent logic, then workflows are suddenly the way to go, as it makes the outcome of the multi-agent more deterministic, less prone to potential hallucinations. We can use a sequential agent to chain sub-agents together, where the output of the previous one becomes the input of the following one. And a sub-agent itself can be another flow, another LLM agent, etc. We can compose them at will. There's also parallel agents. The difference is that the sub-agents are executed in parallel, not sequentially. For example, summarizing a collection of books in parallel, and we can combine their outputs. And the third subcategory of workflow agents is the loop agent, which can run a sequence of agents in a loop for a specified number of iterations or until some termination condition is met. For example, if you want to write a blog post, you might have agents which are writing the post and agents which are reviewing the post. They might iterate in a loop until the post is in a good shape. Once that happens, we exit the loop. Multiple agents enabled by ADK are ideal for complex problems that naturally decompose into smaller, more manageable subtasks or require different areas of expertise. For a travel planner agent, you might need several agents, like one for booking flights, one for finding hotel rooms, and another one for planning your day-to-day -day activities. This approach offers modularity and make the system easier to develop and maintain, although there might be some overhead in communication or latency. Choosing the right approach depends on the problem scope, required flexibility, and need for distinct areas of intelligence or capacity. A key aspect for handling complex, ongoing interactions is context and knowledge management. ADK provides comprehensive tools for managing this. Let's now talk about the conversational context concept. There are components here, session, state, and memory. Let's break it all down. And let's talk about sessions and state. Sessions have key identifiers like a unique ID, an application name, a user ID, helping you manage multiple conversations for different users and applications. Sessions also store the history, a shared state map, and tell you when the last event happened. The session maintains a history of all interactions, messages, tool calls, results, etc., as a sequence of events. And with the session, there's the state. This is our agent's temporary scratch pad, a place to store data specific to this particular conversation. Stored values you store in the state are serializable, ideally with basic types or simple collections of them, so they can be easily saved and loaded by the session service. Some values can have specific prefixes to instruct the session service about their lifecycle. 
Let's look at how you can specify the initial state for the science teacher agent we've created before to make it more generic. We can specify the state map when creating the session by specifying the subject of the teacher and also the audience. Then in the agent definition, we can access the state directly within our agent's instructions using simple table ending syntax with the curly braces placeholders, making this agent even more generic, accepting different topics and audiences. Now here's a warning I'd like to make. Avoid directly modifying the session state. State updates should be handled through events. To update the state programmatically, the safe approach is to append an event to the list of events held by the session service. You send a delta to describe the changes to be made to the state. And that's all we have time to cover today about the Agent Development Kit for Java. So check out the ADK documentation, our sample examples, our past videos, and start building today. And remember, by combining workflow orchestration, multi-agent collaboration, and robust state and memory management, ADK provides the building blocks to create sophisticated AI agents for your most challenging problems. See you in the next one, and don't forget to tell us in the comments how you are planning to use the Java ADK in your projects.